Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you're well and safe, looking after yourselves. So in today's video, it's just gonna be really casual. I wanna share with you some of our decorations and I wanna make some fire cider as well. So it's just gonna be really, really cozy. Just settle back, grab a drink, relax, and enjoy the Yule, Christmassy, seasonal joy. today's video I just want it to be really really chilled and relaxed and if you're new here my name is Emily I like to create content around witchcraft and magic and spirituality and tarot and I absolutely love Christmas it's a really really magical time for me and I know people probably think that I do it really early but for me it's always been a little bit early it's just my parents never put up their tree early it was always like the last the last minute and we always got like the worst tree because of it and then I remember thinking it was a bit early to put it up in the first week of December, but then coming onto YouTube, everyone puts their trees up so, so early. So when I was making videos for my lifestyle channel, I thought, well, I need to be a bit earlier as well. And actually, I liked that because Christmas for me has always been such a special time of year. And I know it's a hard time for some people, but also celebrating Yule, it feels very pagan. It's very spiritual. I feel like it's a beautiful time to go inwards, to, you know, hunker down, to do a lot of healing, which is really beautiful work and divination. And it's just such a beautiful time. And Christmas for me with my family has always been so, so special because I always spent it with my dad's family most of the time. My dad has a really big family, he has four brothers and one of them has now passed away, sadly, and one of my aunties has also passed away, but we had such a big family and I have cousins, lots of cousins, and for me that was like the magic of Christmas, like having Christmas at my grandma's. And so for me there was like so much joy that came with Christmas, but also just the joy of like preparing for Christmas and the smells. My mum always made Christmas cake months before and Christmas pudding and the smells and we always used to make a Christmas cake together or she would make it while I was, you know, out doing ballet classes or stagecoach and I'd come home and it, the smells and she'd make me make a wish on it and it was so witchy and it was so, so beautiful. I loved it and even going to church on Christmas and I don't currently go to church really because I don't take the kids because it's just not the right sort of time for them usually it's either midnight mass or it's right at the time when we're eating dinner for the kids on Christmas Eve now so I don't really go but otherwise I would because I have spoken a little bit about my spiritual path and being part of the Christian church was a big part of my childhood and then my teenage years as well even though I started practicing witchcraft in my teens when I was in a Church of England church I think that's probably when I was the most comfortable because joining a Baptist church that's when I really started to feel very low and anxious and I had 
depression and anxiety and I think that I still feel some of the trauma left over from that and it's just the cat by the way. <laughs> I did speak to this a little bit in my recent video, my VR2 Bronnie OK and it was about my tarot story really but it goes off into other tangents about witchcraft and my spiritual practice and such and now I'm in a place where I wouldn't call myself a Christian but some people, some other people might call me a Christian witch because I'm a witch and I do have Christian values and I do still work with a personified deity being Jesus as well as working with the Morrigan. But for me, you know, I bring the two together and I know some people don't like that and that's fair enough and you know, I don't think that other people should but it's just about respecting other people, I guess. But I still found a lot of magic at the church at that time of year and I know that traditionally the real Jesus wasn't born at Christmas or anything and I know that the church Christianity just stole a lot of the pagan aspects of Christmas and that's another reason why I have no problem celebrating it all because I still firmly believe that it's like got so much magic and potency and but for me one of the reasons that I like to celebrate it early as well not celebrate but like put my decorations up is because it does bring so much joy and light and warmth in the darkness and I think as soon as it really starts to get dark you know I really really like that and I can have both like I can have the darkness of Samhain as well as bring the light in with my fairy lights you know and I love to do that I do agree though that putting decorations up before Halloween is a little bit much but that's just for me and if other people want to do it you know I fully respect that but yeah for me I can definitely bring in some of that light and the literally twinkly fairy lights after Samhain and I wanted to share as well when I had a really low point in my 20s. I was working in London and I was commuting you know, up to four hours a day and out of the house for over 12 hours a day um, working and then commuting and it was absolutely exhausting. I was so, so shattered. I'd go to bed as soon as I got home basically. I'd just eat some food and then I'd go to bed and I was absolutely shattered and really, really low point in my life. And I didn't have a lot of space for magic. The only magic I was really doing was sort of cooking and imbuing my intentions and love into that baking, that cooking, baking cookies and cakes and trying different recipes, cheesecakes and, and then making soups and stews and, you know, roasted meats and all kinds of like recipes and vegan recipes. And, you know, I just absolutely loved cooking and I still do love it, it's just there's a lot less time now and sometimes I'm working and so Tim will be cooking and other times, you know, it's just a race to get dinner on the table so the children aren't like absolutely exhausted and asking for like a thousand snacks after school. So it's always just, it's become a lot more kind of practical. But anyway, I digress. When I was working in London, it was really the hardest point I think for me because I was experiencing a lot of anxiety and then I had a manager who was not a very nice person really and that person really did bully me. You know, they would spread rumors about me, they would delegate tasks to me, I'd see them through and then they'd steal them back at the end and get credit for it. It was, it was really not a nice time and they'd talk to me about the senior members of the staff and it was just really not a nice experience and I started having panic attacks and I was on antidepressants, I was having panic attacks, I had heart palpitations, it was really not a good time, I signed off for a bit with stress and anxiety and depression. You know, I will put timestamps in and uh, warning at the beginning but during that time as well I was also assaulted in London after work by a colleague and it took me years to even report that to the police and I did in the end report it to the Metropolitan Police but it was a really horrible thing to go through. It's really it was after when the Me Too movement happened that's what made me you know decide I need to I need to actually report this and this person and it turned out you know it wasn't the only person he'd done that to either so that was a good thing to do. But at that time, it was a really dark time and I was on the train for so long every day. I would listen to Mariah Carey and it would help me to shield. I would create like a beautiful bubble of protection around me and I would fill it with all that music and light and it would help me to shield throughout the day and help me keep, I guess, the monsters at bay or, you know, however you wanna, yeah. This is going to like a really dark place, but I did want to talk about it. And I think this is, this is a really, really casual kind of video, but this is the right time to speak to it, I think, because I did try in some other videos to talk about it, but it just wasn't the right video. And this is the right time to talk about it because I'm sharing these decorations and everything. And it, 
it just feels like the right time to be sharing and you know it's a lot and I, I'm not sharing it either to like ask for pity or anything like that you know because these are things that I've worked on and I'm healing from and everything but this is the reason why I wanted to explain because I think some people are like what that's too early but you know what for me it's just not and there's something really sacred and spiritual for me about Christmas not just Yule not just the Sabbath Yule and the winter solstice but also Christmas sacred and spiritual and it was a solve for me in really dark really dark horrendous times when I was you know being treated so poorly by other people and allowing them to treat me like that and because I was afraid of getting fired essentially and in the end I did complain and HR said that the only thing they could really do was sit me down in a room with this person and I'd have to have it out with them and I didn't want to do that you know so I waited until I had a new job and I just left and then this this person who assaulted me, I believe that they did the same thing to someone else after I'd left because I was still in contact with a person from that company and that person told me that someone else had confided in them and that happened to them too. So that was a really horrible time and then I just wanted to leave it. And then I was moving jobs and then Tim and I were getting married and then we got pregnant and we moved and everything started again for me. I absolutely think it's fine if people don't want Christmas so early, even now, I don't know when you'll see this, but right now it's like the first week of December. Even if people don't want it now, that's absolutely fine. But, you know, I have a reason and other people have reasons for wanting it. And, you know, so I just wanted to say that, like, it's not just frivolous. It's actually really sacred and spiritual. And the decorating is part of that soul and that seasonal protection. And that music is as well, you know, the Mariah Carey albums and I think Mariah Carey has spoken to the magic of Christmas as well before and I have her biography as well, I got it last year for Christmas, I haven't read it yet but it's something I'd like to read this Christmas I think, I think it would be really special but I've got a lot of books on my list as always. So anyway, I'm just going to get on and I'll show you some decorations. So for this tree I really really wanted to create a traditional red and gold Christmas tree but I also wanted something that was going to be really like kitsch and I wanted some sort of foodie decorations as well. So I'm really happy with this. Picked up all of these decorations this year apart from this one which was made by my best friend and I think it's beautiful, it's one of my favourites. And this one is a family bauble from Italy years ago. But yeah, I love these kitsch like hot dogs and such and then some more whites and golds and so, so pretty. I just absolutely love it and it's just really warming and lovely in here. There's lots of cat hair on here, but I love these two cushions, farm fresh Christmas trees, and then this bar humbug. It's really cute. I got it years ago. Um, just some like lights. I think it's really festive and cute. So I did just want to share as well this little wreath that I made, and I kind of wanted to make something like really rustic, but it wasn't really the easiest to find sort of foraged items. So I did find these like dried flowers and bunny tail type things. And then I thought I could use some poinsettias, but of course I needed to use some sort of faux ones. So I found these at the garden center and I really liked them. I wanted to maybe put some pine cones on it as well. And I have some really pretty sort of like gold pine cones. But I just wanted to also get your opinion because yeah, I'm not sure what I think, whether I should just leave it as is and it be plain and simple, or I should try and add some pine cones as well. Yeah, I have some like natural pine cones as well as like some gold pine cones, but I quite like making wreaths and sort of weaving in magical intentions into the wreaths. Sort of something I really enjoy doing. So yeah, I like it, but I'm just not sure if I should add more or whether that would ruin it. And I quite like the rustic simplicity of it. So let me know what you think. This is the old wreath that I made for autumn. And I actually think it's really, really good for like all year round. So I've just had it up so far all autumn winter and I really really love it. So I'm going to make some fire cider. I haven't made this before. I really wanted to make some last year but I just didn't have any time really with everything else and this year I know that the children aren't going to get their flu jabs until like January which is quite late. I think there was a bit of a shortage this year so I just think it will help us. I don't even know if they're going to want to have it but I also know that since we've been back to school since September I don't know whether it's because of the pandemic and because we were locked down for so long, we were homeschooling last year and this year. And so I just 
think that the bugs have been a little bit like intense. We've had a lot of like sick bugs, tummy bugs and flu bugs and such. And I just thought, you know what, this is the best thing to do because then it will just sort of help us. I mean, even right now I've got a cold and a cough and my hubby and I are sort of testing ourselves for COVID like every other day to make sure that we don't have the dreaded COVID. But so far, touch wood, no, just regular cold and flu. And the kids have had it as well and lots of people at schools and stuff. But yeah, so I just thought that that would really, really help us. So I'm using Rosemary Gladstar's recipe as like a base and including a couple of other things. And I'm just sort of eyeballing most of the ingredients really. And I only have a white onion, but I believe that a purple onion, red onion is better. But I didn't have a red onion. So I'm using a white onion, which I think will just be, it's just the same really. Just I think that the colour is really, really pretty for the red onion. And I will flip the camera around and show you what else I'm going to be putting in to the fire cider. So first up, I have some apple cider vinegar here with the mother, which is really, really important for this recipe. I have a white onion. You can also use a red if you prefer. I have a whole bulb of garlic. I'm probably gonna use about six cloves. Some fresh horseradish, although I believe you can use prepared. Some fennel. I have some turmeric root here. I think I could potentially have gotten more, but that's all I have. I have some clementines for the zest and a lemon as well. This is unwaxed and some ginger root here and some chili. I'm probably not gonna use both of these chilies because I don't want it to be too hot. And this is the jar I have and it's sterilized and ready to go, washed and sterilized. So I'm starting by chopping up my onion and removing the skin and I'm just gonna chop it as finely as I can. So next I'm going to add these onions into my jar here. Just bung them in, it's really, really simple and easy to do, just make sure you have clean hands and obviously your jar is sterilized and clean and yeah, you're good to go. Just pop it all into the jar and at the end we'll cover it with the apple cider vinegar. So next I have a whole bulb of garlic here and I'm just gonna bruise it to get the cloves out. I'm probably gonna use about six cloves of garlic, nice big fat ones, and I'm just going to crush them to remove the skin and then finally chop them as finely as I can. So next up, I'm gonna pop all this garlic into the jar as well. And it was so potent and I really, really felt the magic and potency of the garlic at this point. And I made sure that each step of the way I was imbuing intention into the ingredients as I went. So I've got my chili as well here. I am just trying to be as careful as possible because I'm not wearing gloves. I really don't like the way that gloves smell when you use them in the kitchen, those rubber gloves. So I just try to avoid them. But I try to just remove the spine of the chili and all the seeds. I did manage to get a little bit on my fingers though, but I quite liked the warmth. Although I did touch my face as well and that was a bit painful. So just, yeah, maybe don't do as I do and do as I say instead because yeah, I wouldn't advise it if you don't like hot things. Also, if you're removing the seeds, it shouldn't be too spicy. It's just about the potency and that fire that comes from the chili itself. You don't want all of those seeds because they will be really, really, really hot and you don't want something that's gonna blow your head off. Oh, unless you might really enjoy spice and then you might prefer to leave them in. It's completely up to you. The turmeric root is next and I just love turmeric in curries. Usually I use powdered turmeric but this is so gorgeous it being fresh. And turmeric has a really beautiful kind of earthy quality so it's beautiful for sort of root chakra work, that kind of stability, that grounding, that sense of safety and security. And of course it provides warmth as well and that spice and it's just I think the golden colour of it makes it really really beautiful for kind of 
prosperity and abundance as well. So I really, really like to tie that in. Although, of course, this is about health and I'm hoping that this fire cider is gonna you know keep some colds and flu at bay it's really really nice to kind of meditate on those beautiful magical properties that you can bring in as well with the beautiful gold and that quality of light it makes me think of literally pure gold and just chopping that up and popping it into my fire cider so and it smells absolutely amazing as well it's really really a gorgeous spice to work with and yeah really really beautiful and potent here I have the horseradish root here and I picked this up from a local farmer's market. This was actually really, really hard to chop and I used about a third of it, I suppose, just under a third of it, what you can see I'm chopping up. It's more like a quarter really, but the rest I chopped up into smaller pieces and put them into the freezer so that I could use them throughout the season because otherwise I think it would have gone bad because I can't use the whole lot at once. But I just used a knife to take the outside skin off the peel and then chop it up into smaller pieces. And it was, as I said, quite tough. So do be careful when you're chopping this. But again, it has so much fire in it. And I don't know if you've ever had horseradish fresh before but it really is very pungent it sort of stings your nose and it's exactly the kind of quality that you want out of your fire cider because you want it to be antibacterial antiviral and you want it to sort of warm up the blood and the body and to almost numb the throat and the pain out of it and just yeah keep those bugs at bay so this is just another one of those beautiful I guess grounding elements as well because it is a root it has that grounding element to it and it also has that heat as well it's sort of more earthy in quality not so fiery but it's yeah very very grounding and a really really nice element to add The fennel is next and I think I'm only going to add half of this because it can be really quite strong and it's different to the other ingredients so far. It's very similar to celery, it's aniseedy and it has a different kind of quality but again just a really really nice ingredient to include in the fire cider and with lots of nutritional benefit as well. Ginger, of course, is next, and this is just such a beautiful spice to include. Again, it's a root, but it is really, really potent in terms of that fire. It's spicy, but it's also sweet, and it has such sort of luxuriousness about it, and again, that energy of abundance and blessing and it's just so seasonal I absolutely love ginger and actually watching this back now I really feel like I should have added some cinnamon as well because cinnamon for me is so beautiful especially at this time of year but the ginger is just so so brilliant it's fantastic for colds and flus and I always pack ginger into my curries I absolutely love it it's gorgeous and I think that dried ginger has a different quality to fresh ginger so it's really really beautiful when you can use it in something like this and know that you're getting all of that nutritional benefit from it as well so i have a lemon here and i couldn't find our grater a sort of microplaner which is what i would usually use to take the zest off of a lemon and of course you don't really want that white pithy bit so I'm trying really hard to just use a peeler really unsuccessfully I think I managed to get as much as I could really and that was usable for this though but I need to track down where my microplaner is but the lemon of course is really fresh and zesty and it's full of brightness and light and it's inspiring and it's again just a really really beautiful fruit and citrus it's motivating there's so much about it again that's just really beautiful and of course lemon is really really antibacterial and great for colds and flu of course if you ever have lemon and honey and hot water it's so so lovely I mean I actually really rely on lemon and honey hot lemon and honey when I have a sore throat so this is perfect 
and I'm doing the same with the clementine. You can of course use an orange, a navel orange would be beautiful, it's just we have some clementines in the house and of course these fruits are slightly different but there is still that beautiful sweetness that comes from the orange and that sort of gentle fruity spice as well. Again a real luxury and especially at Christmas they were really really rich and beautiful fruits that sort of signified wealth and so it's perfect for blessings for abundance as well as having all the beautiful vitamin c and now i'm putting in all of my apple cider vinegar and just filling it up to the top i have a little sprig of fresh rosemary here that i want to add and i'm just going to imbue it with my intentions for protection and blessings around the holiday and remembrance as well and yeah I'm just gonna allow it as well to imbue with all of those fantastic nutrients and vitamins and this is gonna be so gorgeous I love it So I've now made the fire cider and very happy with it. I did run out of my Bragg's apple cider vinegar, but thankfully I picked up some other stuff just from Aldi, but this is organic apple cider vinegar with the mother, so it's exactly the same. And definitely if you've never made fire cider before, if you've never used apple cider vinegar with the mother, this is the kind of like typical brand and it's a really, really good one, but it's great that now supermarkets are doing it too but you want with the mother because it means it's unpasteurized so the mother is like the very very start of the bacteria that created the you know fermentation as it were of the vinegar so that's really really beneficial for gut health and such and I'm no herbalist but I am learning more about herbalism and how to cultivate herbs and grow them and look after them and how to work with them in a magical way and I did sort of bless the ingredients as well as I put them in because I feel like that is just going to help and so now I believe we leave this for four weeks in like a dark place I'm going to label it I have to find the pen hang on somewhere there is like a white chalk pen that goes on these labels but I can't find it but I have found this little silver pen silver sharpie so I think I'm just going to use that so I'm just going to write on it all right fire cider and the date today where's the date so just write the date so that I know when I made it and then I can come back to this sort of in a month and we can then strain it out and add a bit of honey to it. So I'm gonna pick up some like raw local honey because that would be really, really beautiful. And also using local honey is really great because the bees make the honey according to the air and then that the idea I guess is that it then helps to heal whatever bugs you've got because it knows what's in the air. I'm not explaining it correctly, but that, I think that's the idea. So some local like raw honey to finish it and then yeah I'm really looking forward to sort of taking a tablespoon every now and then like using it in salad dressings and things and you know taking shots of it and things like I actually really really like spice I love curry I love turmeric I love ginger I love chilies you know I don't like painfully hot things but I do like that heat and that warmth and you know I can still feel the heat on my fingers because I didn't wear gloves or anything I actually quite like it but I did put my finger to my nose my thumb to my nose like after I chopped the chili and I can really feel it and it's, yeah, people. Anyway, that was fun. <laughs> so, my fire slider. So it's really, really dark in the living room now, but I just wanted to show you the Christmas tree. This is like the main Christmas tree that I do every year and it's really snowy and pretty and white and it's got lots of metallics and it's got some blush tones. It's got like one little blue decoration. I got this from Liberties or Selfridges like years ago, maybe like 10 years ago now. I've got some Gisela Graham, some feathers. This is the White Company. This is Decorus, I think. And then I've got down here some little chandeliers. These were from Matalan, I think, a few years ago. It's beautiful Gisela Graham. This is a bespoke one for Gabriel. 
And I do have as well some I'd like to share these. I made these on my lifestyle channel a few years ago and they are witches balls basically, but they're sort of different to the traditional witches balls. They're like wishing baubles and I put intentions for like happiness and friendship and love and a blessed home into them and I get them out every year. And I think we've had them for like three years now and I think I've lost a couple of them, but I've still got some really, really beautiful ones. And I just added in like crystals and calendula and some rose petals and some lavender and such. They're really, really beautiful. And I bring them out every year. The cat really likes licking the flocking off the tree and I, I really don't think that's healthy for her. So, ooh, pussy, you shouldn't do that, honey. Come on. But I really, really do love the kind of metallics at Christmas and I really love the whites as well. It just feels so cozy and I love that the traditional decorations are in the family room and like the dining room and kitchen and then we have these sort of really cozy decorations here in this room so yeah this is just a joy for me love it this decoration is one of my favorites I actually picked this up last year and it's inspired by my grandmother my grandmother always had one of these, like a proper vintage one, in her house when I was a little girl. And unfortunately, when my family sort of sorted through her things, I think that this Christmas decoration and all the Christmas decorations ended up going to charity. So I never got a chance to have it. But last year, I was determined to get one because I needed that in my life. You know, I needed that that feeling. And my grandmother passed away last Christmas as well. So... It really means a lot to, to have this. And this, obviously, it's it's not a vintage or antique one, but it is one that has been made with an antique mould. So this is, like, the mould that they used to use, and it's just been made by an Etsy seller in the UK more recently. You can get the vintage ones. I think at the time when I was looking... Um, the vintage or antique ones, I think they only had them in the States and I'm obviously in the UK and I didn't want to ship, but I did find this seller who was making them this way and I thought this would be the best thing to get something that's really good quality but also that has that traditional look and I just love it. It's just beautiful. So it reminds me of my grandma and it's here on the little table next to the sofa. So over here on the windowsill I just have another little garland now. With some of these pumpkin candles which I've left out because they're really beautiful and I sort of imbued them with like blessing and such. And I really like them there. There's a pair of reindeer ears there. That little chest, I use it for like a Christmas Eve box every year. But at the moment, it's just hiding the wires for the lights. Um, I've got some eucalyptus here. And these are all sort of purpley, which I love. This is a little tree that lights up, actually. The lights aren't on at the moment. It's another little Christmas tree. And I recently picked this up. I haven't decided where this should go yet. So it's just here. But it's just a little Christmas tree farm sign. It was quite cute. So I'm not sure where to put this. I still feel like everything's not really in its right place in this house. So everything's kind of just put somewhere, but I'm not happy with it as such yet. And I've got another one of these beautiful Christmas trees for my dad's. Over here, I've just got this lovely snow globe. I've still got the autumn market sign up. And then I've got lights up around the room. So it's Christmassy. On the stairs, I have these lovely eucalyptus garlands that I've wrapped some LED lights around which I really love and yeah I really think they're beautiful the only thing is they don't go all the way to the banister end so I think I might need to pick up some more but that's that all right so this brings me to the end of today's video I really hope that you enjoyed like the relaxed kitchen chat I know this room isn't the best for like audio so it might be a little bit echoey and I'm really sorry for that but this is what I'm working with today. I've got the kids here looking after them on my own this weekend and so taking them out and stuff and been doing stuff together and I wanted to make this firesider today and it just felt like the right time to share these decorations with you and just how I'm kind of preparing for Yule and like the sacredness, the magic of Christmas for me. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have any thoughts or comments, as long as they're respectful, please do leave them in the comments box below. If you'd like to connect with me, I'll leave my Instagram and my TikTok details on screen as well as in the description box below. I also have a buy me a coffee page if you'd like to buy me a little coffee to show your appreciation for whatever I share in these videos. Uh, appreciate they're very personal, but some of them like 
previous video more educational so potentially that's something that you enjoy and would like to see more of also any suggestions for content you'd like to see I'd love to hear because I do want to make content that you all want to see I very much like making witchcraft and tarot content so you know anything along those lines that you'd like to see do let me know if you enjoyed the video please do click the like button give the video a thumbs up and share it with anyone who you think would find it interesting or helpful or inspiring and if you'd like to see more from me around tarot witchcraft magic spirituality and occult practices then please do think about subscribing and while you're subscribing don't forget to hit that little bell notification because that's how youtube is going to let you know when i create and upload videos like this so with all that said thank you again so much for joining me i hope you stay well and safe and look after yourselves i look forward to seeing you again really really soon and have a blessed yule if i don't see you again soon Mwah. bye